Thank you everyone for having us here. We have a stellar panel amongst us today. Um, and I'll uh, try and keep it interactive and short since we've just been informed that the hard liquor and the beverage service uh, is going to start uh, after one panel and one discussion after this. So I'm excited to moderate uh, the discussion today on what excites uh, talent to choose an independent PR agency. Um, as the founder of Talking Point Communications, which uh, is a 10-year-old firm, and we're fairly young uh, in the ecosystem, I know that it's much beyond the clients that you service. Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, people look up to you as an entrepreneur. That com that's a very important factor, compensation, rewards and benefits. A culture of learning and the opportunity to do more and more is what um, excites everyone. And that's exactly, uh, I would love to hear from everyone and also take back a lot of learnings from what, you know, what we can do to kind of retain our own talent. Um, I have people who don't need an introduction here, but just for the uh, thing of it, uh, I will introduce uh, everyone. We have Deepak Jolly, founder of Consortia Advisory. We have Kunal Sinha, founder director of Value 360 Degree Communications. We have Sanjay Arora, founder and CEO of Ants Digital. And we have Sumanti Chari, who's the senior partner and director at PR Hub. Um, I think I'll start uh, with you, uh, Deepak sir. What do you think really attracts talent towards an independent PR agency? You've seen people who, you know, you've, you've worked with people in multinationals and now you're running your own uh, thing. So what is it, what is the difference and what actually attracts them towards an independent firm? Very good question because this you face every day. Yes. Because when you start something of your own and you want people, what do you offer to them? So I heard from the morning discussion that independent PR agencies offer a lot. Yeah. One, they have empowerment. That's the one basic tenet. The second part which we offer is a lot of things to do at one time. Whether you want to research, you want to research a narrative, you want to work on uh, a client, you want to work on media. There's a lot of freedom to do that. Yeah. And you can't do that with many, many uh, evolved PR agencies which are siloed. Yeah. So I think one part is, uh, but that alone doesn't help, believe me. So every morning is a new morning. And there is a hunger for that person to do something different and to learn something from the founder or some of his senior leadership on what are the ways to handle various aspects of a client. I mean, the client is not only wanting to go to you for PR. The client is he comes in, he is in trouble. He has a trouble with some vendor. Mm. He picks up the phone and says, how can we resolve it? Now, you know, typically, uh, a typical siloed PR company, yeah. that's not my job. Yeah. But here is an independent advisor. So first of all, remove the word PR. Mm -hmm. Here is an independent advisor who is wanting to take to the nth point, okay, this is the way I can do it. So, you know, I, I think we need talked about 36 startup companies, you know, which is, he's handling. I, I think when we started our job, we took many, many startups. And one of the startups, actually, uh, we were just his PR agency, yep. period, that's it. But the three people I took to Bombay, to do his mm -hmm. conference, we got him a free celebrity mm. huh? to endorse. Yeah. We got him a hotel at maybe 50% rate. We got him a media which he would have never been able to get. Mm. So at the stage when he was standing, he said, look, uh, I want to call two people on the stage. One is my father and the other is like my father-like figure. So I was like, you know, there was goosebumps, you know. <laughs> I said, I went up to the stage, I stood there, and he said, you're never gonna be out of my sight, sir. Yeah. 
Now that is something these startups are looking for. Yeah. They are looking at a holistic management view. And if you can create that excitement for your employee to work on different yeah. facets, believe me, the client will not go anywhere. Yeah. And if you are able to kind of, you know, push that bit into your team, yeah. so go beyond PR. That's what I feel has kept me ticking with 40, 45 clients I work with now. That's great. Kunal, over to you. Uh, Value360 has really, really grown over the years. So how have you structured your talent acquisition uh, strategy so that it's not just about filling seats, right? It's about getting the right people to do the right job so that the kind of quality uh, that we're talking about actually gets delivered to clients. So our theme is uh, what attracts talent to independent uh, agencies. And to answer your question, I think uh, independent agencies are attracted to talent and not vice yeah. versa. A lot of my senior leader team, they do not come from the PR industry. There's one person, she was part of hospitality industry. There's one person part of BPO. There's one person who was largely in the legal space. So effectively, when you are actually independent, and I remember one of our colleague on her 15th anniversary with us, she started to narrate a story about her first interview with me and uh, I had a smile because she uh, said that it didn't look like uh, I'm getting interviewed. It looked like you are selling your company to us, to me. And that is what independent agencies are doing all the time. They're not just selling themselves to the clients. They're actually talking to all the talent. They're trying to actually yeah. attract those talent and they're trying to actually get those talent into their structure, which can actually add, to, uh, add value to. So for us, for me, the talent was never, I was never finding in words. Mm -hmm. In fact, in, in my next one year time also, you'll see a lot of talent that I'm going to be onboarding is not coming from the PR industry. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, and I, there are people who've gone out from my agency who were typically not from the PR, this thing, and they're now well placed in some of the biggest PR firm. They're, they're at a senior leadership team and they're doing really well. But they were typically not from another independent PR firm owner, uh, Bloomingdale. And she said, I'm always hiring. I'm sometimes hiring even at a, at a retail store where I find a great salesperson uh, out there. And that is what independent firms are. They're looking at talent across. They're looking at talent, spotting talent sometimes. You were spotting talent among your friends and saying, can you please join in? So for us, the strategy for talent acquisition was never looking inward into the industry itself, looking at talent at large and how they can actually uh, come and add value to Value360. Yeah. So that has been our, our overall strategy through the years. I think that makes a lot of sense, right? Because clients are also expecting us to go beyond just offering what we've been hired for. And if you have people from all different backgrounds, different industries, that's where you're actually able to add value as an independent agency. And that's what becomes the most important, right? It's like finding a solution f uh, for the client's problem, uh, as we've been discussing. I think uh, one of the biggest problems that uh, the sector has been facing is, is retention, right? There's a lot of attrition uh, that happens, especially amongst the younger uh, generation. Um, that's because they're looking for career growth. That's a non-negotiable uh, for a lot of them. So, Sumanti, so maybe if you could tell us, uh, how do you ensure that employees have uh, clear, achievable growth paths at PR Hub? Yes, hi. So, you know, before I answer your question, I'll just touch, because you spoke about yeah. retention, and I'll just divide it slightly here for us. Uh, we've had relatively higher retention at mid and senior levels, like probably for many other agencies as well. And one of the biggest uh, driving factors that I've seen over the years, I, I drive talent pretty much at PR Hub and I've been doing so for a decade now, um, is, you know, the scope for them to function like intrapreneurs within a growing firm. Uh, and not just confi get confined to, they might be servicing clients, they might be working on client accounts, but at least for the mid and senior level, they are pretty much 
um, engaged and involved in the growth of the, the firm overall. There's a lot of transparency in the meetings that we do. So, um, and as far as, you know, um, talking about their roles, so this answers that their roles, while there, where, while there are team structures, there's, you know, in, in when we do our annual reviews, there are um, growth targets for each of the teams and we deep dive a little more into what kind of clients and what kind of work we want to take up and all of that. Uh, it, it's from a larger organizational viewpoint that they have that transparency so that then they can go back and even when they are working on clients, that's, that's the driving factor of how we service clients and the kind of work yeah. that we do for them. So, but when it comes to Gen Z and the younger workforce, and I think a lot of attrition and churn happens there yeah. invariably yeah. because no matter how good or uh, mediocre any agency is going to be, the, you know, they, they yeah. do want yeah. to experiment more than being in one firm. Um, however, the big change that I've seen over the years is that today, unlike the past, uh, the young workforce is not driven by big brands. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as big a factor as it used to be in the past. Yeah. Many of them are much more keen and open to experiment with, uh, you know, a new uh, yeah. independent firm, agency, uh, because they know then that the ability to, for them to be hands-on involved and I must say here, because my own personal journey, and many people ask, you know, that long stint in, a, in an agency has also been, you know, al almost to function like a quasi-entrepreneur yeah. when you yeah. work with an entrepreneur in a, in a company and you get that holistic, you, you move beyond client roles to a business yeah. function. So I think, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what it is. I think coming to Sanjay, uh, in the creative and digital field, I would imagine a lot of the workforce is young, right? And continuing the discussion that we had that um, at the first few uh, entry level and beyond, uh, the attrition level is very, very high. So how do you uh, ensure uh, that the team is engaged? What role does mentorship play for all of them? So, um, you know what I did uh, just before coming for this particular panel, I spoke to one of the most uh, junior most guys mm -hmm. in my team. I have hired him from IIT Guwahati. Yeah. And uh, I told him, give me six points. Why is it that you are, you know, joining mm -hmm. us? Mm -hmm. So, I will read out the points, yeah. what he has mentioned. Yeah. He told me uh, freedom, which is the first thing that everybody yeah. spoke. He also told me expression of ideas. You are not, you know, limiting me to express my ideas over here. Mm. And I think that's what ANS is all about. We are all about scaling ideas yeah. for our clients. Uh, recognition is quick, right? You don't have to wait. You do a good job and you're recognized there and then. And uh, he said agility. Agility is very, very high. Mm -hmm. Quick decisions. There is no bureaucracy. You know, if I come to you, I talk to you, there is a con conversation that happens. Amongst 50 odd people, we take a conversation forward and we are able to take a quick decision on it. And I think, you know, one more thing that he said that we are, we are not looking at, you know, the regular mode of working over here. Mm -hmm. So, you actually hiring entrepreneurs in the organization. And that's what I felt really great about. So, when I was hiring and I think retention was, retention is always a problem for all yeah. the organizations. Yeah. But I, I hired people who have great experience. So I, I hired people from Ogilvy, I hired people from WPP, I hired people from Ernst & Young. So I have got a good set of people mm -hmm. at a leadership level. So I would say yes, while retention becomes a problem at the lower level, but when you see a good deep leadership out over yeah. there, yeah. which is sharing some kind of an experience, I think it matters a lot. Then people at the lower level don't just want to jump from one place to the other. So, uh, I feel hire a good set of people, it's, uh, and a founder should not just be seen as if the founder does not come to the office today, the mm. organization doesn't function. doesn't function. I think it functions beautifully and it functions uh, on its own. That's where yeah. I'm coming from. Totally agree with that. Uh, I think it's it's important to let people feel that they have the ability to run things and to actually make a difference, right? Uh, that's what makes uh, an independent agency uh, so different, uh, where you're able to give them the opportunity uh, to actually, uh, you know, there's, there's so much more self-satisfaction in what you're doing. Uh, 
So Deepak, if you can tell us about how, uh, you know, give us examples of how your employees are actually uh, feeling, uh, you know, the worth of projects much more uh, as a part of your firm. Uh, they're, they're, you know, involved in almost every aspect of it, as you mentioned, uh, you're going all, uh, all out for your clients. So, so how, do you, how do you ensure uh, that they're getting the right kind of experience and learning as a part of the team? So, again, as Kunal mentioned, that yeah. when you spot a talent, you know, whether it's in a store. So, we have picked up people from IIT Kharagpur with 20 years yeah. experience, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, he may have not made it in the government, mm. but when he approached us through LinkedIn, I saw a bright spot. Now, how do you, you know, take that bright spot, work on it, and, you know, make him, let him do a few mistakes. He will. He will shine. Believe me, um, he will shine. And today, I'm so proud that he is he uh, heading a big revenue stream for me. Uh, and a more, most profitable revenue stream, which is uh, on technology and government affairs. Mm. But what I feel is that you have to give them a chance if you're going to lose your temper yeah. uh, on small mistakes, boy, the big mistake, what will happen then? So the question is, how do you handhold team? Uh, how even, uh, you know, because what we have on our side is independence, uh, you know, empowerment, uh, a, a fresh thing to do every day. But we cannot pay him like big companies, you know. So, so what will compensate that part? The learning, the learning curve. That learning curve, if he is doing well, can I promote him? Can I, if he is doing better than others, can I give him a bonus? So I encourage my team to work on success fees model with most of the clients. And I say, if we didn't earn it, bad luck, but I'm not going to fire you. But at the end of the day, uh, if the success fees was earned, because of innovation this guy put in his, uh, in his clients, he added that value. Yeah. Ultimately, if you really look at it, we're all sitting in this room. And 40 years back, uh, I've worked in corporations. We are well, not a subject yeah. uh, in the corporation at all. It was like everybody had this own flair of talking and telling stories and then came this job. And this job value added. And this job value added to investors, to the whole set of 360 degrees. So if you see the value out of that employee in the different facets, and the last point which I always tell, it's the, that's the beauty of uh, working in 33 years in a multinational. So there are value systems. We're not going to compromise on the value system. So when you do an appraisal, you scan through a numeric value on where did you stand on the seven consortia values. Mm -hmm. And that is critical. Believe me, if you did not do so well on performance, but on the values, if you fell, I am not going to spare. Yeah. Yeah. So these are two elements which I feel keeps the employee engaged and who and respect you earn <coughs> is far more than what you would earn on just pure performance. Yep. So these are some of the things which uh, I would go on and on, but you know, there is enough and more examples on that. I think compensation is something uh, that a lot of people directly look at, right? And I was reading an article uh, by a startup founder who spoke about how compensation isn't right, uh, really just the amount of money you're getting, right? It's, it's when you see, when you evaluate it long term, it's really about the experience that you're get, uh, gaining, the kind of uh, network that you're building, and how it impacts your long term career. So Kunal, uh, how do you... How do you look at compensation appraisals uh, and how, how important is that and how is that changing uh, in the ecosystem today? Uh, so going back to your first question, uh, sec, the question to uh, Charu in terms of Sumati, 
uh, bad with him, sorry. So uh, going back to Sumati's question in terms of retention and, yeah. and the lower uh, early um, entry stage talent, if you look at entry stage talent right now, they're moving around because they're looking for quick yeah. um, uh, compensatory growth uh, that they could possibly go. But as you actually start to move in your, in your, in your career, I think compensation is critical for uh, somebody to take a choice in terms of where they do want to work. But that is not the only uh, factor anymore. I think uh, every agency today, and there is a parity in terms of the kind of compensation that has been offered. And because we are catering to the same talent marketplace, which is catered by multinational as well as the biggest of the firms, you have to uh, look at matching the compensation that the market is giving to the talent. So compensation, there is no difference in terms of what the compensation uh, is offered to the, uh, to buy an independent firm. However, what we can talk about uh, from our firm itself is that we started to look at compensation differently. It's not just salary, but also what is the kind of contribution that we can actually give back uh, to people in form of the growth that they are actually contributing to the company. So we created our ESOP structure, we have, we've taken, uh, currently we have actually onboarded few, next year we're trying to actually bring in more than 15 to 20 people in that ESOP structure. And that idea with the possibility of money market that has opened, that ESOP structure also allows you to actually contribute back uh, to the contribution that they are giving back to the company. because. Every individual, it's not just the founder who's created a company of a certain value. Everybody who's actually been part of uh, that organization, they have actually contributed brick by brick. Yeah. So how are you compensating them back beyond the salary that they're actually uh, uh, getting every single day? And I'm sure um, after we announced a lot of independent founders, they reached out to us to understand how they can also actually look at bring in ESOP structure within their organization. And I think that's a very, very uh, uh, interesting trend that I see coming into play because uh, today with compensation, ESOP structure, and other factors, the, the talent is now making a wise choice in terms of where they would want to actually yeah. invest their next few years of their career. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's very important to kind of uh, give them the value as you mentioned and uh, your organization name has value in it. Uh, that's, that's the most important for uh, people today. Uh, Samiti, if you can tell us, uh, you know, global firms have uh, a lot of learning and development opportunities that they offer. Uh, they, they give, uh, you know, you have global resources, uh, you have access uh, to leaders from all across the world. How do you at PR Hub kind of ensure that people are getting continuous learning opportunities uh, through the work that they do? Yeah, good question. Absolutely, because learning is uh, critical today for all organizations and also for growth firms like us. Because if the very, you know, one of the biggest reasons that I think when uh, Jolly or Sanjay initially spoke about also the diverse nature of uh, you know, work that one can do in an independent PR firm and early. Now, if we cannot continue that with learning and growth, um, and after a point of time, you become pretty much like another uh, large agency, then that's, that could also be the yeah. reason you lose the same talent because the talent pool is still small and both the large network agencies as well as the independent PR firms operate within that. So, um, <coughs> Like, we do have, um, you know, monthly programs uh, which, uh, which is in-house. Uh, besides um, one annual program which is larger for the entire organization where we have pretty much done like a growth chart and, yeah. you know, yeah. what are the need gaps and all of that. And there's a lot that, that's needed today with all the technology we spoke about, AI. Uh, I think just, uh, you know, adapting technology is a huge learning area that we all need to invest in. We are, it's still work in progress. Um, having said that, uh, I think the personalized coaching uh, growth, depending on each person's growth path, especially at the mid to senior level that I spoke to you about earlier, is very important for us as an organization. So we invest significantly more uh, with this uh, uh, category of yeah. people than we would do 
for the entire firm and organization wise. Uh, our, our approach has been we wait until uh, someone is there with us at least for two to three years mm -hmm. to start making larger investments yeah. in them. Yeah. I think that's very important, right? Yeah. Uh, contribute here. I think learning and development is a very critical part for any organization. And multinationals do have an access to a lot of global learning programs. What we have done at our uh, organization is a flipped learning program where what we do feel is that top to bottom approach doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. So if I feel that, okay, I need to actually train everybody with certain program and I let choose a partner, get that program implemented. Sometimes what it means is that somebody who's actually already uh, very experienced in that particular mm -hmm. skill set, he's, we are wasting a resource there. So what we do is we let every individual managers identify the skill gap and they recommend a program and since we have an access of so many uh, learning programs across online and offline, you could possibly choose to give them a very personalized skill gapped uh, this thing and a organization level uh, program that you could possibly do about what is new that is coming your way which is the AI, effective use of AI data yeah. that you can actually do across the board. But the other part which is very critical is how do you actually make it personalized and that is why we call it a flick learning program where we say it's a bottom to top approach. Let the people who are actually working, so if I'm a manager, I'm working with an executive, I should know what my executive need. So imagine if the person has to do an Excel sheet and he doesn't know the yeah. basics of Excel sheet. I should be training that person with the Excel sheet rather than actually giving him training on any other thing because right now that is the skill gap that I need to fill in. So that's in terms of learning and development that we feel that independent firms can actually uh, create and customize the program based on what their organization need is at that point of time. Yeah, yeah. I'll just pitch in, sorry, uh, over here, I'm just taking Kunal's point. Uh, you know, it's what hat do you wear when you come to the office. Mm. So I'll mm. give you a very cool example out over here. I, we hired this guy eight years back. He was a back-end coder. So he came and he started coding over here. He's the CTO of our organization mm. today in nine years, right? And uh, you know, when you walk in, na, you don't know what is the work which is yeah. there in terms yeah. of… So there is no structure per se when you are running an independent firm, let me tell you. So there's a guy who has actually written a script, he's also doing a voiceover. Mm. Plus has also written a press lease, yeah. plus he's also disseminating. So what structure are you actually talking yeah. about? Yeah. You know, where, where is the learning and development that is coming place? The person who has coded the, the we have our own CRM by the way, we, it's called mm -hmm. as Anthill, right? We run. So every single employee has got an Anthill space out over there mm -hmm. on which there is a structure which is there. You know, what is he getting, what is his growth path, how much he is getting, what clients did he handle, what are the new innovations that he brought to the table. So everything is mapped out over there. So we are not doing performance appraisal on mm. 31st of March of 2025. Yeah. My 1st of April, we start, uh, appraisals are done, increments are given and people are moving ahead. And that's the beauty of technology and I think technology should get integrated yeah. Yeah. in a lot of PR firms out over here. because. If we can independently create something out over there, we don't need to go to a sales for or a SAP or to any other large agency uh, to you know get products out over there. So we are intending to be a product company over a period of time. That's what we intend doing. Yeah. Yeah. So I just uh, taking a cue, I want to add here. Build on the strengths. You know, if the strength is at say an A level, take that to D. It will be much faster. Sometimes the company is an uh, and even PR firms work on the weakness, mm -hmm. which never comes up, never comes up, and then you start feeling frustrated. So the point is, here is an opportunity because we are doing public advocacy, we are doing CSR, we are doing CSR reports. So I can, you know, you quickly see his interest in first three months and attach him to the area which you feel gravitates best to him and then build the capability and add it over there. What people tend to make a mistake is that if he is not good in content, you keep on sending him to content yeah. programs. Yeah. And then what happens is, uh, you see, is this improvement in you? How much money did you do? And your, your bottom line is affecting. So it is better that inclination for that strength and that feeling I have to do well, 
and I have to prove myself should be there as a part of that. And believe me, the capability work program when we work with HR works much better. And again, decision of a founder alone doesn't matter. The lead of that person, the people manager, the HR person, and if required, founders sit and say, okay, this is a collective call, three, two. Huh? This is the way we have built the program for you. And that excites the person. And he, we, uh, we let him tell what went right, what went wrong. Uh, hits and misses are a part of parcel of life. And I think that is something I feel very uh, you know, grateful that I'm able to coach in last maybe seven years, more than 150 people. That's, that's the beauty. Samati, my question is for you. I was reading some of it. You do a lot of work for bringing women into the workforce and women development and inclusivity. And that's something I'm also personally very passionate about. Uh, you know, brought a lot of women who were not necessarily from the PR background, uh, young mothers back into the workforce. So, so uh, you know, how do you attract that talent and how do you actually make a difference uh, to the segment? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's an area of personal interest as well. But um, even during the pandemic, not that before that we were not uh, attracting a lot of women talent, but I have to say that um, during the pandemic, we kind of woke up to this a little more because it was a time when we decided to go slow on hiring, but we were still having work. And one of the things that, you know, like we all know now, and it has been discussed enough about um, at least a few years back now, of course, there are, there's more diversity of talent in the industry, but a few years back, definitely the industry attracted a larger number of women, uh, at least at entry levels. And then invariably, as you move to mid and senior levels, you would see that it keeps yeah. diminishing and simply because of, uh, you know, personal and family reasons and the long hours that the industry requires and all of that. But what we did was uh, two things, because like, like for all other companies it enabled, uh, you know, we had people who, who were very good and they had to move on. So, um, sim because they had to move away from the city, we didn't have offices there, they were located in some other place. We said, uh, you know, let's get them back uh, and figure out how they can start contributing. And I must tell you, it's, it's actually worked very, very well for us because we got in talent that was skilled, that um, imbibed a lot of our culture and values, um, uh, knew us right from the early days. So even as we grew and we were attracting diverse talent, I think it helped to have some of them back at those levels to kind of keep that culture a bit intact. And at the same time, because clients were also, you know, slowly uh, beginning to stop asking for physical presence and meetings, um, it actually worked very well because there was no distraction of, you know, a general yeah. workspace yeah. and, uh, you know, your peer influence and all of that. They were, uh, uh, I think I must say that many of them who are remote working from different locations, um, came together very well and they were very focused and it, it actually helped us deliver better with clients. In men, you know, when we went back and did an analysis and uh, all of that, it was really working well for us. And that number has grown. We did a lot of reverse hiring during that time and a large number of them women um, who were experienced. So it, it was just a mutual win-win. We have someone who's sitting out of Munar and like she drives all of our uh, social digital yeah. uh, work and similarly uh, i mean we have many other examples people working from different locations now uh, also of course you know uh, in our regular offices because you spoke about women um, you know i i must state this because as much as it's important we 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 are focused on gender balance yeah. so yeah. Uh, it helps because I think each bring in their own strengths. Uh, but we are trying to avoid, you know, uh, family if they are good and yeah. they belong to the team. We are trying to see how to retain them. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think I've been told that we don't have too much time left, so I'm going to quickly uh, ask a question to each one of you. Uh, short answers uh, would be appreciated. I think uh, most of the founders uh, in this room all started at independent agencies. Uh, that's that's the beauty of it, right? Uh, um, because it could be the hustle, uh, it could be the learning experiences, etc. So if you had to kind of sum up what what value uh, anyone joining an independent agency uh, gets in a few words, what would, the, what would uh, those words be? I, I think um, a, a very, very keen interest by the founder in that individual. Uh, and I've seen, I've, I've, I've not witnessed, but I've heard even the biggest of the independent agency f firm founder is keenly interested in what the executive is doing, what the manager yeah. is doing. Yeah. So uh, I do feel that you get somebody who is actually keenly interested in you and your growth. So if you're joining an independent firm, be rest assured that there is somebody who is actually very closely monitoring you. And if you are if 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 you are willing to actually contribute back in a similar way, the we have seen data would reflect that most of the most of the leadership team across the industry, whether it's multinational or uh, independent, definitely or are all independent, uh, are led by people who started their career in an independent firm. Yeah. So you pick up all the multinational firms also. Yeah. Their CEOs today are the ones who had started with an independent firm or they were in that firm which was independent at that point of time. So that is what you get when you are a part of an independent firm. You get real chance of uh, leading in your career and growing in your career, in the real sense. No, I'm not just talking about compensation. Yep. Sanjay? I think skin in the game. Uh, yep. People who come into Ants, they need to have a skin in the game. And uh, we are typically, because you know, you've reached one stage where you feel that, okay, we need to come out with good work. And yeah. I think good work is something that gets you more clients and then it gets you everything that it, it, it gives you a different kind of a high altogether. Yeah. Money automatically comes, you know, and you don't have to run for work, work comes. Only thing is you need to have right set of people who have got skin in the game and they, they, the way you go in the office in the morning as a founder, yeah. every single person who is coming over there is a founder. It's as yeah. simple as that. I think that's the philosophy with which we work. Thanks. So, you know, I worked with a founder, Sunil Mittal, yeah. much early stages and he used to say one thing that uh, and this was his quotable quote in the year 2002 and 2003 when he was very small he would say that people look at monday when monday kab aayega aur mujhe office jana hai yaar ye saturday sunday bada boring hai yeah huh? so no uh, honestly you know and that uh, he built a team of 25,000 people. Wow. And believe it or not, uh, yes, when the company became large, it, things happened. And I was there as a direct report for three years. And I saw him connecting all the pieces together. So even if the founder is, he wants people to have a skin in the game, I think that you have to check the pulse. Yeah. Ki wo Monday ko excitement hai yeah. ki nahi hai. Ko excitement hai yeah. to you're safe. Yeah. And that check is a must. Yeah. That keeps the company, so we call it a company of ideas, Idea. a factory of ideas, and a bundle of energy. So these are two sets. If you have it, you will make it, and you will grow so fast. My last question to Samadhi, if you can just sum up, what's your advice to people actually looking at career opportunities, uh, you know, what, what's your advice to them to also look at independent firms and, uh, you know, in the same way as they do with global oh, it's firms? It's absolutely the right place to start and to continue for a long time, actually, if, because one of the big mistakes that I feel many of the uh, people make is that they try to make that quick change, yeah. but if they stick on for a little more, um, I think they will be far more capable uh, when they go out yeah. finally, yeah. you know, because uh, I think they need to wait patiently un until they develop those holistic skills, but it's the best platform and opportunity to do so provided, you know, the leadership in yeah. the agency allows for it. 